I Don't by Scott Mason. Oftentimes, as a story develops, the person you sympathized with when the story first broke isn't quite the object of your sympathy anymore once you've learned all the details. To that end, when it came to light that South Carolina Governor Mark Sanford had been making Argentinian booty calls, or as the aides who had explained his absence at the time put it, hiking the Appalachian Trail, I initially felt terrible for Sanford's soon-to-be ex-wife Jenny. I thought, gee, what a horrible ordeal for her. If only she had known he had cheating in his blood, she never would have married him and had to go through this nightmare. But hey, it's not like he came right out and told her he was a cheater, so how was she supposed to know? Oh, there's only one problem. Apparently, he did pretty much come right out and tell her. According to her soon-to-be-released autobiography, Jenny Sanford claims that she married her husband even though he refused to be faithful, even going so far as to insist that the clause be removed from their wedding vows. As she explained to ABC's Barbara Walters, quote, it bothered me to some extent, but we were very young and we were in love. I questioned it, but I got past it along with other doubts that I had. End quote. This reminds me of the old parable with the woman and the snake. The woman finds a hurt snake, picks it up, and nurses it back to health, only to have the snake bite her. When the woman asks the snake why he bit her after all she'd done for him, he simply says, hey lady, you knew I was a snake when you first picked me up. Earth to Jenny Sanford, you knew he was a snake when you married him. He outright told you he was a snake. So excuse me if I don't really feel bad for you while you act all indignant after you finally got bit. Still, this whole thing brings up a larger point. There are a lot of people upset at Mark Sanford. They say he shouldn't have gotten married if he never wanted to be faithful. But what if the circumstances here were different? Let's say Sanford decided to have multiple partners, but take a wife as a domestic partner to have on his arm at gatherings and help raise his children. If, in this scenario, these terms were acceptable to his wife, would it be a bad thing? Or taking a step further, if Sanford Sanford wanted to have multiple wives and they all were okay with it, would that be a bad thing? And just so I don't get accused of being sexist, the same goes in reverse for a woman who might want a man to play the domestic partner type role or take multiple willing husbands. A study conducted in 2000 by professors Curtis Bergstrand and Jennifer Blevins Williams of Bellarmine University found over 80% of people in open marriages were happier after they began having more than one sexual partner. So does this mean I'm endorsing swinging? No, but what it does mean is that what works for some people is different than what works for others. And the decision shouldn't be left up to you or me, but to the relevant individual people. The state should have absolutely nothing to do with the institution of marriage as a whole. And that's what's always infuriated me about the gay marriage debate. Gays and lesbians frequently ask why they shouldn't be eligible for all the special rights and benefits that married straight people get. I understand their point, but the better question is why do married people of any kind get any special rights and benefits. According to the GAO, as of last year, married people had access to roughly 1,100 federal benefits that single people didn't. These include joint adoptions, access to social security benefits, status as next of kin, and so on. But why is it that in order to have access to these types of benefits, the government has to legally recognize you as married? Why aren't these things that can simply be put into private partnership contracts as long as all parties involved are consenting adults? It's the same reason why there are all types of special tax breaks for homeowners and loan guarantees for college tuition, because the government believes they should be in the business of social engineering for the, quote, good of society. But just as the housing crisis showed us that it's not in everybody's best interest to own a home, and constant rises in both tuition and the amount of graduates who leave school with massive amounts of debt shows that it's not in everybody's best interest to go to college, a 44% divorce rate likewise shows it's not in everybody's best interest to get Get married. Now granted, people are fallible and will make bad decisions on their own plenty of times, but the point is the government's incentivizing of these activities is unquestionably making matters worse. As much as everybody hates to hear this, marriage may be about love to an extent, but it's also a very important business decision. Anybody you legally married is tied to you like a business partner, sharing equally in your success and failure, and staking equal claim to assets if the partnership dissolves. And while it's fine if individuals choose to enter into these kind of agreements, we need to end this fairy tale like notion that somehow we're all better served by pushing it as a societal ideal. If we can do that, then maybe we can get the government out of the marriage business once and for all. And perhaps then we can finally open up a world where anybody can marry or not marry whoever they want, and Southern governors can go hiking the Appalachian Trail to their heart's content.